This video is called High Yield Images and it's brought to you by Dirty USMLE. So I know that a lot of you guys are really in the thick of studying for step one and level one and it's crunch time. So I wanted to release a quick and dirty video that was just a collection of highly tested images. These images are gonna include things like x-rays, CT scans, histology slides, and also just gross pictures of like a patient's skin or say of a tumor or things like that. So I'm just gonna go through these um, I picked out 40 images. These are all really high yield. Of course, it's not all inclusive because if it was an all inclusive lecture, it would be on the order of like a thousand slides. But I picked out 40 images that you should really be able to recognize when you see them because they may show up on your exam. So let's just get right into it. This is negative biofringence, and that is gout. We've got a Kaiser Fleischer ring, which is the brown ring in the eye. You see that in Wilson disease. Um, remember that that is copper overload and if they ask you what laboratory changes you expect you would have a decreased ceruloplasmin. I'm just blurting out some high yields as we go through this. These are clue cells which are seen in Gardnerella vaginosis. Basically it's an epithelial cell that's coated with the pathogen. This is an Ashoff body or I should say Ashoff bodies you see these in the muscle of a patient who has rheumatic fever. So this is in their heart muscle. Here we have Kirschman spirals, which are seen in the sputum of asthmatic patients. Uh, if we can go back to Kirschman spirals for one second, I also want to mention that um, I didn't include it, but you could also see Charcot-Leydon crystals. So Google that when you have some time. This is erythema multiforme. It's basically a target lesion that usually occurs on the trunk or the extremities. And a lot of people confuse this with Lyme disease, so don't make that mistake. Erythema multiforme, there's usually a lot of them. There's more than one. And the patient will have no history of camping or any other risk factors that kind of point you in the direction of Lyme disease. This is caused by herpes simplex virus. So if a patient gets HSV and then later has this rash, that's the causative agent. So just keep that association in mind. Here we have a subdural hematoma. It's said to be crescent shaped and it's along the perimeter. Contrast that to an epidural hematoma, which is lens shaped. Something to keep in mind is that the etiology of these are very high yield. So with an epidural hematoma, it's a rupture of the middle meningeal artery, but with the subdural hematoma, it's the bridging veins that are involved. So that's something that you definitely want to know. Here we have melanoma. When melanoma, is presented to you on the exam they'll, uh, they'll show you a picture like this and something that's really high yield to know is that the most important prognostic factor or prognostic indicator is the depth of invasion so how deep does this lesion go into the skin here we have call exner bodies which you find in a granulosa cell tumor kind of a distinct image so take a few seconds to stare at this and become familiar with it one of the ways that they go after the the more rare and I should say lower yield tumors such as the granulosa cell tumor is to show you histological slides to see if you really understand what it is that you're looking at. Here we have a phyllodes tumor which is a type of breast cancer. It kind of has a leaf-like projection that's how it's described. It's another good one to keep in mind because in clinical practice it's rather rare but the histology is so unique that it becomes high yield for USMLE. Here's the classic butterfly rash seen in lupus. You could also have a discoid rash, which is not pictured here, but that's another thing that you might want to Google, be comfortable with as, as far as lupus is concerned. Here we have ulnar deviation and involvement of the MCPs. This is classic of rheumatoid arthritis. Not pictured, but something to keep in mind is that if it was osteoarthritis, there would be involvement of the DIPs. This is a, T, a CT scan showing polycystic kidney disease. You see the kidneys have numerous cysts in them. They're slightly larger than they should be. Something to keep in mind that's high yield is that this puts you at risk for a brain aneurysm. There is an association that you should know. These are neurofibrillary tangles seen in Alzheimer's disease. Kind of a rare image, or not rare, but a unique image. So definitely familiarize yourself with this. Here we have one of my personal favorites, and if you've seen my other videos, you know how I feel about basophilic stippling. But this is basophilic stippling. Uh, it's lead poisoning is the diagnosis. 
Here we have a rouleau formation of red blood cells, which is classic of multiple myeloma. So the red blood cells kind of form this stack. They should be more spread out, but in this case, they're stacked on one another. Here's the Schiller-Duval body. Here we see multiple of them. This is found in the yolk sac tumor. Again, as I mentioned a few slides ago, with these rarer tumors, know the histology because you're very likely to see one of these. This is hilar adenopathy, classic of sarcoidosis. Anytime a question gives you a 40-year-old African-American female, the first thing you want to think is sarcoidosis and then go from there as far as what type of symptoms they may be experiencing, such as hypercalcemia, uh, non-caseating granulomas, etc. This is a horseshoe kidney on a CT scan, classic of Turner syndrome. At first glance, you might look at the CT scan and not really notice um, what it is that you're supposed to be finding because CT scans are very difficult to interpret if you're a newcomer, especially at the M2 level. You're not really expected to know how to read CT scans, but nonetheless, the CT scans that will show up on USMLE and Comlex are going to be ones that are very, very unique in nature. And here we see a kidney that envelops both sides bilaterally, hence the name horseshoe kidney. Know this image. Here we have a hairy cell uh, found in hairy cell leukemia, very aptly named. As you can see, the cell has these hair-like projections coming off. So if you had to take a guess on your exam, you might even get lucky guessing that this is a hairy cell because it literally looks like the cell has hair. Here we see a heliotropic rash, classic of dermatomyositis. High yield to keep in mind with dermatomyositis is that patients with this disease have an increased risk of either developing a malignancy or they already have an underlying malignancy. This is a schistocyte. These are also called helmet cells. They are commonly found in DIC, HUS, TTP, and aortic stenosis, which is a rare one, but you should keep that in mind. Patients who have aortic stenosis kind of have a functional slicing of red blood cells that pass through that stenotic valve. So you actually can get an anemia secondary to the aortic stenosis, and you're very liable to see schistocytes. Keep that association in mind. Not a lot of students uh, know that, so it's kind of an extra point to bump you over the average if you can pick that up on test day. This is a multiple segmented neutrophil, which you will see in a B12 or folate deficiency. Here we're looking at situs inversus, which is classic of Cortagener syndrome. So you see that the heart is kind of mirror image flipped onto the right side. And of course, the mediastinum should be more towards the left. So in this case, we've got situs inversus. This is a CT scan showing a pulmonary embolism. The classic PE that may show up on your exam will be what they call the saddle embolus. It sits over kind of both sides of that bifurcation that you're looking at. So be comfortable identifying PEs on a CT scan. This is a great image. This is a Reed Sternberg cell, classic of Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's got the owl eye nuclei, as they say, and it's a very, very high yield image. This is probably one of, if not the most high yield images in this uh, 40 that I've picked out for you. Here's the lead pipe colon or lead pipe sign, which you see in patients with ulcerative colitis. Notice that the colon is, is rather flat and it should, um, it should not look like the lead pipe. So the, the reason we call it the lead pipe is because it's flattened out to such an extent that it's no longer really recognizable as the, the typical colonic wall. These are, this is a Lewy body, which you see in Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia. Again, most of the images that you see in the nervous system uh, or the neurology systems chapter, they're all very unique. So you do want to be familiar with them because they're, they're very unique and these board exams love unique images. This is the thumbprint sign. This is probably a top five as far as high yield goes in this lecture. We see this in epiglottitis. So in epiglottitis, the epiglottis becomes so inflamed that it takes on the appearance of a fat little thumb. Uh, something to keep in mind, obviously, the number one um, pathogen we think of with epiglottitis would be H. influenza. So keep that in mind. These are kimmelstil wilson nodules. So you see these in diabetic nephropathy. They're kind of pink globs that sit in the kidney. Anytime you see this, you want to obviously think about nef um, nephropathy and diabetes. This is a teratoma. Teratomas are tumors that have multiple um, components to them. So in a lot of times you'll see teeth or you'll see hair and lots of different organ uh, tissue types. So 
Anytime you see anything that looks disgusting, weird, like straight out of a horror movie, think about a teratoma. Here's a seborrheic keratosis. It has the, what they call, stuck-on appearance. It looks like someone took Play-Doh and just stuck it onto your skin. This is seborrheic keratosis. Steeple sign, just like our friend the thumbprint sign, anything having to do with the airway is super high yield, definitely top five. Um, this is in croup. Uh, it's supposed to look like the steeple of a building because you have subglottic narrowing. Here we see an apical lung cavitation. If you close your eyes and you hear the words apical lung cavitation, I want you to immediately think of tuberculosis. It should be number one on your differential. Here is a good one. This is a starburst appearance, which you classically see in the bone of a patient with osteosarcoma. It's a sunburst, or excuse me, a starburst appearance. Um, something that's not pictured here, but to keep in mind would be that if we had a different type of bone tumor, which is called a Ewing sarcoma, you would see onion skinning. So onion skinning is Ewing sarcoma, and starburst appearance is osteosarcoma. Be able to, to differentiate those. This is a Virchow node. This is a supraclavicular enlarged lymph node that signifies that there's underlying malignancy. Definitely high yield. Here we have the apple core sign. So anytime you see uh, an apple core lesion in the colon, you want to think about colon cancer. And then our last slide, we're going to finish off with a meningioma. So you could be, there are a lot of different brain tumors that they can show you on test day. But one of the ones that they love to go after is a meningioma because it's really unique. The tumor classically sits on the periphery of the image. Some people confuse it with an epidural hematoma, but these are usually a little bit more hyperdense, meaning more white, more thick uh, than an epidural hematoma. You, you can recognize these because since it's a meningioma, which means inherent and in coming from the meninges, it's going to be on the periphery where the meninges sit, whereas other brain pathology would be more spread out. The other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, which is really high yield to know, is that if you see multiple lesions in the CNS, like multiple tumors, not just one, it usually means that it's um, brain metastasis. So a, a tumor inherent to an organ typically is one solid singular tumor but metastasis is multiple foci of tumors so just keep that in mind that's high yield but that wraps up the high yield 40 images that i pulled for you guys i hope this was helpful if nothing else just watch this video while you're taking a poop during a study a study break and i'm sure it, it might help you or give you an extra point that you otherwise wouldn't have had all right good luck boys